Well, what? <laughs> it's your boy P back in this hole. Today we talking about how white supremacists who kick black kids in the back should be killed. So this is a story about the white supremacist male who kicked the black boy in the back. We'll get into the details, but this is just evidence that black people, we need to know how to think on our feet. Talking about the interview that the mother had with the world after the incident. Because what happens is we get in front of cameras and the lights and shit. And a lot of times black folk, we get shocked. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens with a lot of us when we put on the spot in front of the world, right? And motherfuckers don't know what to say, right? But the story is this white supremacist, Riff Trace, walking behind this black woman and her two kids into the store. And he kicks a black baby, Javel Fry, one years old, kicks him in his back with his cowboy boot. And then he tries to run out the store. It's just that simple. They didn't even make it far into the store. And he kicks the baby. A kick and run. He didn't kick the mother. He didn't kick his 11-year-old sister that was holding his hand. He kicked the smallest person he could find. A one-year-old. So people tackled him and kind of dog-piled him. And, you know, the police got there. They said he was resisting the police and all of this. And he has a history of violence, this guy, Riff Trace. Just very violent. Got domestic violence. They locked him in a mental facility. He got drug crimes, DUIs, all this other shit, right? And he's a self-admitted white supremacist. He kept saying he's a white supremacist during this whole thing. And he's allowed to be in society as a self-admitted white supremacist gang member. All right? And I'm sure this is not the first time that he's admitted that he was a white supremacist gang member to the police as they were arresting him before. I'm sure this is not something new. Of course, we know that white supremacist gang membership is more important than the cops. It's higher up than the cops in a system of white supremacy. We saw that with the boy Jerry York about a week ago. Y'all remember he was a motherfucker that uh, stole the fucking police car, beat that bitch with a bat, beat that police down with his bat skills, took her bat, beat her up, you know what I'm saying? Stop, Jerry, you're going to get in trouble, Jerry. All that shit, right? And the cops is just agreeing with the whole thing like some robots. Cops is on automatic when it comes to white males Shooting and abusing cops and stealing their cars and shit. They're just on some robotic shit. Yes, I agree with white male dirt. Yes, I agree with white dirt. I am a robot. Yes, I agree with white dirt, right? Cops only know how to bring these motherfuckers in alive. These white fucking abusive animalistic criminals, right? But they charge this riff trace with battery. They call it battery that was biased. Uh, resisting arrest. He got a $350 bail. Yes, that's right. You heard it. 350 fucking bones. And Wichita is a 75.3% white city. So why am I not surprised? Before I get to what LaChantel Whitaker was saying, that's the mother of Javel Fry. More importantly, what she was doing in the interview let me just give some advice to the black parents of little kids. I'm not trying to shame our sister LaShanta Whitaker. Just some parent advice. Don't ever have your child walking behind you in a public place. The only thing that should be behind you is your basket. You know, if I'm in a public store, if they was in a grocery store, I keep the basket behind me, right? Because you can't protect a child who's way, way far behind you. You know what I'm saying? I see it all the time in the public place. You have your child beside you. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't try it in any other way. If you raise some bad kids who don't listen to you and they refuse to be at your side, <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, you got to raise better kids. You got to tell them that, look, white supremacists will kick you in your back with cowboy boots if ever they are not right beside you in a place. All right? And then don't have your kids goofing off and playing in the store. Those days are over. Those days are over. The kids got to be on point. So there's a 
Not saying that these kids were doing that. I'm, I'm just giving you some roundabout advice. There's a time and a place where kids can get away with this shit. You know what I mean? But in a grocery store with a whole bunch of different people, a mixed bag of people, hell no. Nah. Have your kids on point. Let them know that, look, okay, when we, with grandmama, I'm saying, or we at grandmama house or some shit, that's the appropriate time to be smiling and laughing and playing and kind of away from me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let them know, hey, that's cool. If, if they grandmama not no psycho or some shit, right? Because usually, look, when I'm at grandmama's house, what y'all see me doing? I'm laughing, I'm playing, I, it's all good. But you got to raise soldiers, straight up. You keep your kids at your waistline, like a gun. You should be able to look down and see your kids immediately. And if you can't, then you fucking up as a mother, is my point. Because white supremacist society, what they going to try to do, this is what I see them trying to, I ain't trying to put the energy out, but I know white supremacist society, they'll fuck around and try to take little Javille away from Miss LaShanta Whitaker, knowing how the fuck they dumb asses are, you know what I'm saying, I mean, well, 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 black lady, you know, you should have been watching your child, maybe you could have done something to stop, you know what I mean, these are the cards that they try to pull to absolve whiteness from wrong, we know this. Had it been a white woman who got her son kicked to the ground, her one-year-old, by a black man, there'd be no chastisement of, you should have been watching your white child. We all know how they spin it. They wouldn't even look at the mother. It would have been, well, that black person is wrong. He should be killed. Straight the fuck up. You know, just like Harambe. When uh, the little baby fell into the Harambe tank, what was they doing? They was pointing the finger at the mother. and I mean... And the father that wasn't even there that day, right? Like, y'all, we just got to know. This is the pile on that they do. Whenever black people aren't 100% on perfect, 100% on point out here. So we just need to move like we know what they do all the damn time, right? But, look, they did an interview with the sister, LaShantel Whitaker. And she was talking and explaining the instance. And then... One thing that just really kind of got to me, I saw there was points and parts in the interview she was actually giggling and kind of laughing. And I'm like, no, no, hell no, 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 sister, no, what the fuck are you doing? Fuck no, don't. I mean, she's, you're basically telling the people that you didn't think it was serious. That your one-year-old got kicked in the back with a cowboy boot. Saying that the shit is more funny to you than it was egregious. And this all white city that you living in. I mean, do do the do the demographics. You programming the white people that live around you. <laughs> in Wichita, Wichita a white ass place, man. You are programming into the white people around you that, hey, black people, they just gonna smile when you abuse them. And that's just fucking retarded. She's And she's really setting up some white folk to get close to them black folk in the inner city of Wichita and get fucked up. <laughs> Straight the fuck up. Because they come with that mentality that old black folk, they're going to be laughing and playing with them. Like her. <laughs> you understand? If you look at the map, like, it's some real Jim Crow shit out there. Like, Wichita... It's black folk in the middle of the city, and everything all around it is white. So, I'm just saying, you have to intellectually defend your child if you can't physically defend your child. You know what I'm saying? Because, unfortunately, that's what's going to happen. If, you know, if, if anybody around the mind state of, look, I can't fight for my child, then you got to, you know, you got to do something intellectually. What I'm saying, and I don't want to put it out there again, we don't know, but, you know, Lil Javil, he going to look at that shit years down the line. He going to watch that interview. He going to be like, bitch didn't even call for this admitted white supremacist head to be chopped off for abusing me when I was a baby. He going to look back at you. Miss Whitaker and be like, yo, you was laughing on the news. You ain't even fucking care. <laughs> and 
And that's going to be bad. That's going to make him hold some angst and anger towards you because he's going to watch this shit, right? But I just want to say, no, no, little one-year-old baby, Javille, nah, man. Us in the new black media, we speaking up for you, little baby. Even if your mama, somebody somebody who puts you in the earth, even if she don't care, even if she don't speak up for you, I mean, somebody care about you in this black community, damn it. We speaking up for one-year-old Javille, one-year-old Damone out there in New York, you know what I'm saying? So what the fuck we doing, man? So I don't know how, how I could put it together, like. Like the example I gave in my video, I did uh, ridding the black woman of the Gucci Mane and the Young Thug energy and the Young Thug mentality where you don't got nothing to say about black people issues, but it's always some goofing and bullshitting on your mind, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have the option not to intellectually defend ourselves in front of these cameras. And when people, you know what I mean? You know, when I'm out in the streets and I'm out handling business and I'm just doing this or that or whatever, you know what's always on my mind? What I'm going to say if the camera get in my face right now saying black people deserve all the evil being done to us every day, every night in a Reese's monkey constructed, Reese's monkey supremacist ass environment. What's my response going to be? You feel me? Like, y'all know my channel is about black people's response and what it should be to all groups of people who seek to do evil to black people. Some people call it cold, right? I agree. All That's just what it is. So. All that goofing and smiling that our women and children do. Of course, I'm not saying all of them. I, I, I'll make it a point to say especially not all the sisters. Because, I mean, look. The sisters that's doing right, I want y'all to come to my channel and feel warm and fuzzy when y'all come to my channel. I'll happily give y'all the gift of saying I'm not talking about all sisters. I don't care how many times I got to repeat it. Because that's a status. You understand? That's a status that you work for as a black woman. You know what I'm saying? You work to be put in that category of sisters. So, I'm going to single y'all out to tell y'all not all sisters. As many times as I need to. I don't care if I got to repeat it over and over again. I don't get tired of saying it. Because that's y'all's reward for being motherfucking on point. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm happy doing it. But, you know, keeping to the topic... Back to Miss Whitaker giggling and laughing for people to see you smile and laugh that the one of yours got done dirty. It's like, you know, we can talk a little bit of behavior psychology real quick. Like, that's an invite. A smile, that's an invite to your personal space. Societies all over teach that, that a smile or a laugh is like a welcoming gesture. It's a it's a sign that you got your guard down kind of thing. And a system of white supremacy where a black is a constant victim and you on camera in front of millions. It's almost like you flirting with the dominant society. Just just follow me on this. Like when you when you smile at them or when you smile around the dominant society and one of theirs just got through doing you dirty and doing your people dirty. You know I'm saying it's almost it's almost like being a bimbo, you know what I'm saying? Your response to getting treated like shit is smiling and laughing. That's some brain dead bimbo shit. And that's just, just in general, the smiling and laughing shit, it invites danger to black people in a society where yeah, you you giving the average motherfucker on the street a closeness that they don't even need to imagine that they have with black people. You give them a reason to perceive you as a friendly motherfucker and can be in your face and think that you cool. Right? Like, what have you done to deserve that? Right? <laughs> a smile, it's like a gateway to the danger zone. Especially in a society where all people have normalized in their brains pretty much is abuse black people. Right, this is some shit we gotta get under control. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it's almost it's almost sexual to smile or laugh in public in a system of white supremacy. Very brain dead, bimbo like, bimbo sexual. Goddamn it! I mean, and it's just ridiculous to be smiling right in front of the masses, the masses of motherfuckers. That want to see you and everybody that look like you dead. Motherfuckers that don't want nothing but the most 
egregious injustices done to you and your people and you not say nothing about it 24 7 people always trying to make evil happen to you and it just invites danger overall don't be on that shit i hate that shit i know sisters i know y'all friendly i know y'all the mothers of civilization i know y'all all got jobs and shit where y'all get bribed to smile <laughs> i mean but from a nigga that don't got no job where people pay me to smile at the public. I don't got no job where people pay me. I hustle. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know. Once you leave your job, cut that shit the fuck off. Cut that goofy shit the fuck out in public. All that smiling and laughing. You're not a fucking child. You know what I mean? You don't have the luxury to carry yourself as a fucking Disney child. Where everybody else don't see you as a child, black woman. They don't see you're a child or even you as a child. You know what I'm saying? They don't see none of y'all as a child. They see you and yours as something to put a bullet in. Somebody to bring harm to. Somebody whose child they can kick with a cowboy boot and be taken in alive. Right? So here's what I would say in the interview. Y'all know my, my classic statement that I always say. If I'm ever... Somebody ever do something to my people and they put the camera in my face. My statement is always the same. I'll repeat it. Y'all know my classic. I can't tell y'all what you should do. I can't tell y'all what I'm going to do. Is there any more questions? It'd be the shortest interview in history. Y'all know how I get it the fuck down. But if I had to give a long-winded answer, what would my long-winded answer be? You know what I mean? I always say, always do the classic if he was black, it would have went different. It's classic. It works to bring everybody in the room back to earth. Black people. So if you ever get in an interview and you had a loss of words, I always say, look, if he was black, the shit would have went different. If he was a black man kicking a white one-year-old with a cowboy boot, this is what I would have said. I said, look, if he was a black man kicking a white toddler with a cowboy boot, he would have been killed in the store. So, this white male, Riff Trace, he should have been killed in the store. And that would be the end of it. Straight the fuck up. And then I would have said, oh, oh, if not in the store, he should have been followed to his car and killed at his car. Or he should have been followed home and killed at his home. And then I would end it by saying, look, black people, we need to stop being afraid of saying admitted white supremacists need to be killed. And then I would have walked the fuck out. You know what I mean? Straight up. That would have been the long-winded answer. That's it. Because, you know, the dominant society, they would have done all that I said. All those activities would have been sanctioned and considered acceptable by the white public and the white supremacist crowd. Who this guy claims he's even a part of. His white supremacist gangs. Right? If it was somebody black doing it to a white baby. Right? Shit, y'all remember the story? Uh, there was a white female and a black man out of a park in uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania a couple years ago. Uh, they were watching over a black boy in the park, and the white bitch was trying to get the black boy and some girl. I don't know if the girl was with him or what. She was trying to get them to fight, and then the girl had the black boy in a headlock, right? Had him in a lock. Had him locked up, right? Then the black boy to get out and defend himself, he kicks his way out of shit. He like starts kicking the bitch and starts fucking her ass up, right? Then this white bitch, this white female that's walking with this black male, I'm thinking they have some sort of swirler coon master slave relationship going on, some bullshit like that. She starts kicking the black boy. This is the video. We saw the video, right? Where she's like kicking this black boy. That was the story behind it. So the lesson is, anytime an adult kicks a black child, they should be killed. She should have been killed, right? This is the narrative I'm trying to just help people soak on. We've got to keep telling it to ourselves so it can become the daily upon daily. She should have been killed, right? Always end it with, they should be killed. <laughs> just so people can know what the code is. We know what their code is. Their code is to abuse. And our code that we're developing is they should be killed. They, that should be the ebb and flow of the streets. That should be the current that we keep. 
So out there in Wichita Falls, all my people, look, start to think like that. If they put a camera in your face, think like that. White supremacists should be killed. White people who abuse black babies, men, women, children, anybody should be killed. Because they would say it's all good if it was a different situation. If you was black abusing somebody, white, man, woman, child. They say you need to be killed too. So what the fuck? That's what the fuck we do. They need to be killed. Rich Trace should have been killed. He need to be killed. Where he going? He out on bail. He should still be killed. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know when I'm dropping. Get it, y'all.